prosthetic for this Tuesday is about die spacers. You remember that colorful liquid that used to be applied on a die to create room for your cement space? That was a part of the analog world. Mm. Today in the digital world, that die spacer is computed in microns automatically on the software. Now, it's not uncommon for laboratories and technicians to increase that gap, increase that die spacer so that there is less friction between the seating of your restoration on the abutment tooth. That basically means that your restoration slips in very, very easily without much friction. But that also means your restoration come, come out with as much ease. So my recommendation here is whenever you get a zirconia based restoration designed by the laboratory or a CAD CAM PFM made by the laboratory, first seat the restoration on your die, flip it around and give it a tap. Shake it and jerk it a little. It's important that your crown does not topple over, does not fall off. This tells you two important things. One, that your preparation has adequate retention form and your resistance form is good which is very important for us. And second, it means the technician has not made a very loose restoration. Remember, glass ionomer cements depend very strongly on the taper and the retention and resistance form. So if you want to make sure that your crowns don't dissipate and topple off very easily, go ahead, try this trick and make sure your laboratories give you relatively tight restorations. If you like this tip, go ahead and comment on it, share it with your friends so that more and more dentists can understand the importance of correct dye spacer thickness.